Welcome to Talking Balls, your Monday roundup of the football results from around the high peak. Hi, I'm Louise Bellicoso and he's Jason Chadwick. Right, now before Louise gives us her report from the Sutherlands, uh, we'd just like to say uh, stay tuned because afterwards we've got a great uh, interview with John Reid giving his after-match uh, comments and his views about the Matlock game which is coming up later in the week. We'd also like to say thank you to all those of you who've contacted us with feedback about this programme and particularly the many, many Glossop fans. The figures actually say that something like, well, over a thousand of you watched last week's coverage of the Vars semi-final, which is actually a quarter-final. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you anyway. OK, Louise, over to the Sultans. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant result on Saturday. Buxton winning 2-1 against Geisley, who were very high-flying in the table, so fantastic there. Uh, Buxton got off to a great start. Mark Reid put them ahead before even a minute had passed with a, a really like carbon copy of his goal at FC United, to be honest, which was a bit strange. Um, they did pull one back in the 16th, 17th minute, but then uh, Reedy equalised again a minute later. So vital three points there. Absolutely brilliant result. So um, hopefully they can build on that when they go to Matlock this Wednesday. Yeah, well, it's great to see Reedy finding his shooting boots. Cause Absolutely. I mean, it's been a great servant for the club, but since he's kept came back, he's not been quite as sharp as he was before, has he? But I think he's he's getting there now, he's isn't he? turned things around in the last couple of weeks, hasn't he? He's got two or three goals under his belt, and I, I know he'll only build on that one. He's the sort of lad who'll take that forward and it, yeah. you'll see it as a positive thing. And they've all been absolute stonkers, haven't they? I mean, the Absolutely. one at FC was Oh, belting, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Right, so we go down to the other end, the other teams at the bottom of the uni bond. Uh, Matlock beat FC United, didn't they? They did, yeah, on Sunday, 2-1. So that's a great result for them, mm. if not for anybody else. Uh, <laughs> right, Works Up also won, but uh, Boston, Lee and Prescott all lost. Yeah, so the, thankfully the results seem to go pretty much in Buxton's yeah. way on Saturday as well. Yeah, so in terms of league position, it's pretty much unchanged, isn't it? Pretty know? much, yeah. yeah, but I mean, obviously those three points are just the most vital three points probably so far this season. Absolutely, absolutely. So, well, without further ado, let's go over and uh, we'll get John's after-match comments. Yep. It's absolutely... Colossal. There's no other word for it. it. It were a massive game, and we spoke about that before the game. But you know, them lads were up for it today. You, you know, they they were more or less doing their own team talk today, and uh, they were focused as they have been. I think the last two or three games. I think to be fair, they've really they've really got to grips and they've looked at league table and thought, oh my god, we are, you know we we are in trouble. Um, but at the end of the day, we've got enough good players in that dressing room, and with the games we've got left, we can't, we're capable of winning six or seven of them, and that would take us well clear of the uh, bottom four. I, I think don't think we've played as well today as what we did against Bradford and FC United, and yet we've gone and beat. You know, we've stopped them from going into playoffs positions today. You know, they're a very good side. Uh, and first half, I thought we played some great football. Obviously, got off to a flying start. Mm. 50 seconds, the uh, goal was given. Great work by Danny Reed, and he fed uh, Mark Reed through, and fantastic strike. I thought we were sloppy for their equaliser. You know, Greg and, and Tom gave uh, Bambrook too much time, and he's got a sweet left foot, and he showed why. Uh, but we, we bounced straight back. You know, again, Mark Reed got on end of things, and. Uh, First half, I thought we were excellent, you know, and I thought we and we just said we've got to work our socks off now. Second half, and we defended brilliantly as a team. And I don't think Scott really had a, a save to make in the second half, which is fantastic when you think how, how, how strong the wind was. So it, it were a battling performance, um, and, and and you could tell by the fans at the end there that you know they really appreciate appreciated what we'd put in in the second half. So uh, it's a great result for the, the club. It takes a, a lot of pressure off the lads. We, we we're all under pressure. We all know that but it puts us in great uh, you know heart now for Wednesday at Matlock you know, it's, it's a big game in any circumstances but you know with it with ease you know with obviously both of us fighting for our lives uh, uh, yeah it could uh, it, there could be a lot of spice in that game mm. and, uh, I just hope my lads uh, stay on the field because yeah, I, I think that there will be a, 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 it'll be a proper proper battle and uh, I'm going to be intrigued to see what the uh, the fans will be like I think it'll be, it'll be good on and off the field yeah there's a lad who trained with us on uh, Thursday um, a, a, a lad who who's, um, lives at Bradwell, um, Greg Mosley, 18 year old, and uh, he did the warm up today. Yeah, and we've got some news on Scott Hartley as well this week. Um, he has now extended his contract to the end of the 2009 season, so that's brilliant news because he's been a huge part of the team this year. You know, kept him in quite a lot of games, and he's a great, great keeper. Well, he's had some stick this year as well, but yes, um, he has, but he has yeah. been a great servant for the club, and Absolutely. he made a phenomenal save on Saturday. He did, yeah, and uh, he's won several man of the matches for me. You know, this season with his performances, kept that in so many games. Mm -hmm. So 
that's really good news. I think he's the fifth player now to um, be signed onto contract, so that's great news. Gives them a bit of stability. Great news for the books then. Excellent. Right, and you're going to fill us in on New Mills? Yeah, New Mills. They had three postponed games this um, last few weeks, and they returned into action last week in the Manchester Cup semi-final. They did unfortunately lose 2-1 at Mossley. But, of course, the home team are in Uniband League One, so they can't take too much uh, from that one. No, no. At the weekend, they bounce back, though, to win at home in the League 3-0 against Winsford, so that's great, and their league form's continuing. It's, yeah, they're marching on towards, well, hopefully, uh, promotion. Yeah, brilliant there. Right, and Glossop North End. Yeah. Which I appear to be becoming an expert on. You are. <laughs> <laughs> well, mm, um, <laughs> Come on, fill us in on them. I don't, I don't know why I became the Glossop correspondent, but it's... Uh, well, let's change the scenery for you. It's a role I'm revelling. Yeah. Right, well, after their uh, exploits in the Vars, uh, Glossop came back down to earth again this weekend, unfortunately. They lost 4-3 oh, at home. Oh, dear. So it's um, a bit of a... Not a nice way to lose 4-3 no, at home, not any, really, anyway. No. Uh, but they do finally know who they're going to play in the Vars semi. It will be Chowpont St. Peter. Though they made a meal of it as well. They had uh, a replay, extra time and 11 penalties before Cracking. they beat Newton Market. So. <laughs> they didn't make it easy for themselves, No, they did they? the hard way, didn't they? <laughs> so, uh, and the... Um, is it the end of the month, uh, the uh, Vars? It final? is, 28th of March, I think, uh, the next game. I, I right. I'm not well, I'm not, I'm not quite sure when the semi is, but oh. I think the final is the, is the end of the month, isn't it? I think it's, yeah. I think yeah. It's oh, so. by the way, um, to you Gossip fans, we were hoping to bring you video of the semis, but unfortunately we can't do because uh, we've been outbid by Satanta, so. who appear to have deeper pockets than we they do. They do, I, I yeah. Don't know, you know, I mean, they've I'm got the broadcast right, so we'll, we'll bring you the story and the pictures, but we can't bring you any video. I don't think there was much in it, though, to be honest. Just a couple of uh, well, quid. Well, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Mm. Right, we'll move on to the Hope Valley then. Um, in that league, the top two teams played each other and the bottom team did as well. Um, at the bottom, Blazing Red lost to Dronfield Woodhouse, but at the top, Whaley Bridge beat Brompton 3-1. Yeah, well, I was there, and I must say it was a very encouraging crowd for, you know, for that level of football. A lot of people there, big, you know, clash between the top two. Excellent. And um, I've got to say, well, I wasn't there that long, but it looked quite close, so obviously Whaley must have uh, stepped up and, uh, to, to oh, get excellent. three. excellent. And it's good to see people turning out to support, you know, football, Absolutely. considering the, the way things are at the moment. So. Well done to all you fans who braved all the uh, rough weather we've had this weekend for that one. Definitely. And uh, just before we go, just to mention about the Derbyshire Senior Cup, still not been 100% decided there, but it is looking likely that it's going to be the final at Pride Park on the 28th of April, I think. So we're still waiting for confirmation from the Derbyshire FA, but as soon as we know that, we'll let you know. Excellent. OK, and that's all your football news this Monday. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much.